Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte Part 5 Mr Rochester proposes Part 5 Mr Rochester proposes Later that day I received a letter which greatly surprised me Later that day I received a letter which greatly surprised me Mrs Reed my aunt was dying Mrs Reed my aunt was dying and she wanted me to go and visit her and she wanted me to go and visit her I set off at once on a long journey to her home I set off at once on a long journey to her home When I got there I was told that my cousin John had died When I got there I was told that my cousin John had died My aunt was very ill My aunt was very ill At first she could not speak to me At first she could not speak to me But one day as I was sitting by her bed But one day as I was sitting by her bed She showed me a letter She showed me a letter It was from my father's brother who lived in Madeira It was from my father's brother who lived in Madeira This is what it said This is what it said Dear Mrs Reed Dear Mrs Reed I'm looking for my brother's daughter Jane Eyre I'm looking for my brother's daughter Jane Eyre I am now a rich man and I have no children of my own. I am now a rich man and I have no children of my own. I want Jane Eyre to live with me. I want Jane Eyre to live with me. Can you help me to find my niece? Can you help me to find my niece? Yours sincerely. John Eyre Yours sincerely John Eyre I looked at the date on the letter I looked at the date on the letter But Mrs Reed I said This letter was sent 3 years ago But Mrs Reed I said This letter was sent 3 years ago Why didn't you tell me about it before? Why didn't you tell me about it before? I never liked you, Jane Eyre, my aunt replied. I never liked you, Jane Eyre, my aunt replied. I wrote a letter to your uncle. I wrote a letter to your uncle. and i told him that you were dead and i told him that you were dead i told him you died at lowood school i told him you died at lowood school now go away and leave me now go away and leave me A few days afterwards Mrs Reed died. A few days afterwards Mrs Reed died. I felt sad that she had disliked me until her death. I felt sad that she had disliked me until her death. And I felt glad to leave her house and return to Thornfield Hall. 
and I felt glad to leave her house and return to Thornfield Hall. It was summer, and the fields around Thornfield were very green and full of flowers. It was summer, and the fields around Thornfield were very green and full of flowers. For me, it was the most beautiful place in the world. For me, it was the most beautiful place in the world. Because it was now my home. Because it was now my home. I know that Adele will be pleased to see me, I thought. I know that Adele will be pleased to see me, I thought. But what about Mr. Rochester? But what about Mr. Rochester? I want to see him so much. I want to see him so much. But how does he feel about me? But how does he feel about me? Perhaps he's already married to Blanche Ingram. Perhaps he's already married to Blanche Ingram. What if they're going to marry soon? What if they're going to marry soon? What will I do? What will I do? I felt unhappy when I thought about Mr. Rochester and Blanche Ingram. I felt unhappy when I thought about Mr. Rochester and Blanche Ingram. I can't stay here when they are married, I thought. I can't stay here when they are married, I thought. I must leave this house which I love. I must leave this house which I love. And I will never see Mr. Rochester again. And I will never see Mr. Rochester again. When I came near the house, I saw Mr. Rochester. When I came near the house, I saw Mr. Rochester. He was pleased to see me. He was pleased to see me. And so were Mrs. Fairfax and Adele. And so were Mrs. Fairfax and Adele. I really felt that I had come back home. I really felt that I had come back home. One evening, a few weeks afterwards. One evening, a few weeks afterwards. I went for a walk in the garden after I had finished teaching Adele. I went for a walk in the garden after I had finished teaching Adele. Mr. Rochester saw me there. Mr. Rochester saw me there. Come and talk to me, Jane, he said. Come and talk to me, Jane, he said. He's going to tell me that he's going to marry Blanche Ingram, I thought. He's going to tell me that he's going to marry Blanche Ingram, I thought. Are you happy here, Jane? He asked. Are you happy here, Jane? He asked. Yes, Mr. Rochester, I'm very happy, I replied. Yes, Mr. Rochester, I'm very happy, I replied. You'll be sad to leave here, he said. You'll be sad to leave here, he said.
I could not look at him. I could not look at him. He's going to tell me that I must leave because he's getting married, I thought. He's going to tell me that I must leave because he's getting married, I thought. Yes, I will be very sad to leave, I said. Yes, I will be very sad to leave, I said. But you must leave, Jane, Mr. Rochester said. But you must leave, Jane. Must I? I asked. Must I? I asked. Will it be soon? Will it be soon? Yes, it will be soon, he said. Yes, it will be soon, he said. Is it because you are going to get married? I asked. Is it because you are going to get married? I asked. Yes, Jane, I am going to get married. Yes, Jane, I am going to get married. Adele must go to school and you must find a new job. Adele must go to school and you must find a new job. I will help you. I will help you. It will be far from here, though, my little friend. It will be far from here, though, my little friend. Then I shall never see you again, I cried. Then I shall never see you again, I cried. You'll soon forget me when you are far away, he answered. You'll soon forget me when you are far away, he answered. But I will never forget you, I thought. But I will never forget you, I thought. You may forget me when I am not here. You may forget me when I am not here. But I will never forget you, Mr. Rochester. But I will never forget you, Mr. Rochester. I could hardly speak. I could hardly speak. Tears were in my eyes. Tears were in my eyes. And all that I could say was, Never. And all that I could say was, Never. He looked at me for a long time. He looked at me for a long time. And then at last he spoke. And then at last he spoke. Perhaps you don't need to go, he said. Perhaps you don't need to go, he said. Perhaps you can stay here when I am married. Perhaps you can stay here when I am married. I felt angry now. I felt angry now. Did this man think I was made of stone? Did this man think I was made of stone? Did he not know how I felt? 
Did he not know how I felt? Did he even care how much his words hurt me? Did he even care how much his words hurt me? I could never stay, I told him. I could never stay, I told him. When Miss Ingram is your wife, I must go. When Miss Ingram is your wife, I must go. I know that I'm not rich and beautiful like her. I know that I'm not rich and beautiful like her. I am poor and unimportant. I am poor and unimportant. But I still feel sadness. But I still feel sadness. If you marry Miss Ingram, I must leave here. If you marry Miss Ingram, I must leave here. I was surprised when Mr. Rochester smiled. I was surprised when Mr. Rochester smiled. But I don't want you to go, Jane, he said. But I don't want you to go, Jane, he said. I am not going to marry Miss Ingram. I am not going to marry Miss Ingram. Please stay here with me. Please stay here with me. Because it's you I want to marry. Because it's you I want to marry. I heard what he said, but I could not believe it. I heard what he said, but I could not believe it. You're laughing at me, I said. You're laughing at me, I said. How can you be so cruel? How can you be so cruel? I am not laughing at you, Jane, he answered. I am not laughing at you, Jane, he answered. It is you I want to marry. It is you I want to marry. And not Miss Ingram. And not Miss Ingram. Jane, will you marry me? Jane, will you marry me? He looked at me so tenderly that I had to believe him. He looked at me so tenderly that I had to believe him. Mr. Rochester really did want to marry me. Mr. Rochester really did want to marry me. He wanted me, Jane Eyre, to be his wife. He wanted me, Jane Eyre, to be his wife. Yes, I said quietly. Yes, I said quietly. I will marry you. I will marry you. We will be happy, Jane. We will be happy, Jane. No one is going to stop us, he told me. No one is going to stop us, he told me. With a strange look in his eyes, which I did not quite understand. With a strange look in his eyes, which I did not quite understand.
But I was too happy at that moment to think about it for long. But I was too happy at that moment to think about it for long. It began to get dark. It began to get dark. The weather changed. The weather changed. And a strong wind started to blow. And a strong wind started to blow. Rain started to fall as we walked back to the house together. Rain started to fall as we walked back to the house together. Part 5 Mr. Rochester Proposes Later that day, I received a letter which greatly surprised me. Mrs. Reed, my aunt, was dying, and she wanted me to go and visit her. I set off at once on a long journey to her home. When I got there, I was told that my cousin John had died. My aunt was very ill. At first she could not speak to me. But one day, as I was sitting by her bed, she showed me a letter. It was from my father's brother, who lived in Madeira. This is what it said. Dear Mrs. Reed, I am looking for my brother's daughter, Jane Eyre. I am now a rich man, and I have no children of my own. I want Jane Eyre to live with me. Can you help me to find my niece? Yours sincerely, John Eyre. I looked at the date on the letter. But Mrs. Reed, I said, this letter was sent three years ago. Why didn't you tell me about it before? I never liked you, Jane Eyre, my aunt replied. I wrote a letter to your uncle and I told him that you were dead. I told him you died at Lowood School. Now go away and leave me. A few days afterwards, Mrs. Reed died. I felt sad that she had disliked me until her death, and I felt glad to leave her house and return to Thornfield Hall. It was summer, and the fields around Thornfield were very green and full of flowers. For me, it was the most beautiful place in the world, because it was now my home. I know that Adele will be pleased to see me, I thought. But what about Mr. Rochester? I want to see him so much. But how does he feel about me? Perhaps he's already married to Blanche Ingram. What if they're going to marry soon? What will I do? I felt unhappy when I thought about Mr. Rochester and Blanche Ingram. I can't stay here when they are married, I thought. I must leave this house, which I love, and I will never see Mr. Rochester again. When I came near the house, I saw Mr. Rochester. He was pleased to see me, and so were Mrs. Fairfax and Adele. I really felt that I had come back home. One evening, a few weeks afterwards, I went for a walk in the garden after I had finished teaching Adele. Mr. Rochester saw me there. Come and talk to me, Jane, he said. He's going to tell me that he's going to marry Blanche Ingram, I thought. Are you happy here, Jane? he asked. Yes, Mr. Rochester, I'm very happy, I replied. You'll be sad to leave here, he said. I could not look at him. He's going to tell me that I must leave because he's getting married, I thought. Yes, I will be very sad to leave, I said. But you must leave, Jane, Mr. Rochester said. Must I? I asked. Will it be soon? Yes, it will be soon, he said. 
Is it because you are going to get married? I asked. Yes, Jane. I am going to get married. Adele must go to school, and you must find a new job. I will help you. It will be far from here, though, my little friend. Then I shall never see you again. I cried. You'll soon forget me when you are far away. He answered. But I will never forget you. I thought. You may forget me when I am not here, but I will never forget you, Mister Rochester. I could hardly speak; tears were in my eyes, and all that I could say was, "Never." He looked at me for a long time, and then, at last, he spoke. "Perhaps you don't need to go," he said. "Perhaps you can stay here when I am married." I felt angry now. Did this man think I was made of stone? Did he not know how I felt? Did he even care how much his words hurt me? I could never stay. I told him, "When Miss Ingram is your wife, I must go." I know that I am not rich and beautiful like her. I am poor and unimportant, but I still feel sadness. If you marry Miss Ingram, I must leave here. I was surprised when Mr. Rochester smiled. But I don't want you to go, Jane," he said. "I am not going to marry Miss Ingram. Please stay here with me, because it's you I want to marry." I heard what he said, but I could not believe it. "You're laughing at me," I said. "How can you be so cruel?" "I am not laughing at you, Jane," he answered. It is you I want to marry, and not Miss Ingram. Jane, will you marry me? He looked at me so tenderly that I had to believe him. Mister Rochester really did want to marry me. He wanted me, Jane Eyre, to be his wife. Yes, I said quietly. I will marry you. We will be happy, Jane. No one is going to stop us. He told me, with a strange look in his eyes, which I did not quite understand. But I was too happy at that moment to think about it for long. It began to get dark. The weather changed, and a strong wind started to blow. Rain started to fall as we walked back to the house together.